Whether it's a lightly modified car or a very heavily modified car, whether it's small turbos, big turbos, singles, twins, if you've got boost, you've got to control it. Today, we're going to be setting up the new eBoost 3 on this R34 GDR. When it comes to boost control, it's more than just aiming for a peak number. What you're actually trying to do is tailor make that boost curve to suit your car and what you're using the car for. So being able to control every aspect of the curve is super important. We've got this R34 GDR here with stock twins and very basic bolt-on mods to demonstrate the settings in the eBoost 3. Because this car has the stock twins and the stock dump pipes, it presents a lot of challenges that the eBoost 3 must overcome to achieve the curve that we want. If the car itself had a nice free-flowing exhaust, a matched turbocharger with a nice external wastegate and manifold, the boost controller doesn't tend to need to work so hard because it's all working efficiently. On a car like this, we've got to use a lot of manipulation in the settings to get the curve that we want. So out of the box, there are a few settings that we need to put in before we even start running up the car. We're gonna to need to set the overboost shutdown value. We're going to set the number of set points, so the number of boost groups that we have access to. We're going to enable RPM so that the eBoost 3 is reading RPM so we can work on boost correction. And we also need to enable the boost correction factor. From that, we can then go into the boost menu and start adjusting the SP value the gate pressure value and the sensitivity value in each of the boost groups. We've already wired up the eBoost 3 in this car. Uh, because it is equipped with a MoTeC ECU, we've got an attack output for the RPM signal that goes to the eBoost 3. We've gotten power from the stereo uh, and we've run a new solenoid and replaced the OEM one, still using the factory lines, but we're using the included Freeport solenoid. So let's power up the unit. Turning ignition on, splash rings comes up. So just note, this is how it comes out of the box. We've done a factory reset on it, and this is how it comes out with all the settings out of the box. So first things first, let's get into the unit. So we rotate the bezel, we're going to settings. We're gonna go to setup. First screen will be overboost shutdown. Now, we like to set overboost shutdown about three PSI above target, um, just to account for any temperature changes or any little spikes. So with this car, because we're trying to aim for 18 PSI of boost, we're gonna set the overboost shutdown to 21 PSI. So click in, the number will light up, red, and we're going to adjust the value and set it to 21 PSI. We're going to press the bezel again to save the number. Next thing we're going to set is number of cylinders. This car is a six cylinder engine, so we're going to set this value to six. Press the bezel in, rotate to the number six, press it again to save the setting. Set points. This is the number of boost groups that you want to have access to. So the eBoost 3 is capable of controlling six different boost settings. Um, so this number will determine how many boost groups you have access to when you're in the boost menu. So this car, we're going to run two boost settings. We're going to run whatever um, everything is off. So set points are zero, sensitivity zero, gate pressure zero. So whatever the wastegate actuators will make, that's what set point one will be set at. And set point two, we're gonna set at around 18 PSI. So I'm gonna click into this, rotate the dial, number of set points two. Next settings, um, you can go into units. I like it in PSI, so we're gonna keep it in PSI. But you can change it to KPA, you can change it to other units if you want to. RPM, enable RPM. So this will turn on the 
um, eBoost Free to read the TAC output from the ECU. So without this enabled, um, the eBoost Free won't display RPM. And we're gonna need RPM to enable the boost correction feature. So we're gonna go into this, I'm gonna turn it on. And the next setting, boost group source. So at the moment it's on ISP, so that's internal set point. That allows you to adjust the boost group that's active with the bezel. Um, in this menu, you can also have access to things like boost on demand, external switch points, or all of the sequential timed base shifting of boost groups. We're gonna to come to enable boost correction and we're gonna turn this on. Now, after all of these settings have been inputted, what we need to do is cycle the power on, off and back on um, to update the display. And now what you'll notice is we have RPM displayed as well as this bar graph on the outside that will also display RPM. All right, so now we're going to fire up the engine. Before you run up the car, it's always good to just go into the boost menu and confirm that all the settings are at zero before you run up the car. Now that we've done our first run, and we can see what the boost curve looks like with no boost control. Um, it's now time to set up our second boost group. Uh, we're gonna leave our first boost group um, with no electronic manipulation. So to get into the boost menu, we're gonna go into settings, press in, press into boost. We're gonna select boost group two, go in, and we've got set point two here. Now, a good starting point is to add 20% to the duty cycle and run up the car. So that's where we're gonna start. I'm gonna press in, numbers are gonna highlight red, and we're gonna turn this up to 20. Then we're gonna press in to save the setting. We're gonna hold the bezel to start exiting the menu structure to get back into the graphs. Now, because we're looking into boost group two, and you can see the number one here, that means that boost group one is active. We're gonna go into that, see how it's highlighted red. We're gonna turn that to boost group two. So now boost group two is active, which is at the moment set to 20%. So let's run up the car. So there's our second run, and we can see the overall boost curve has gone up, but we're still not at our 18 PSI target. So we're gonna need to turn up that number a little bit more. So the first way that we just went through of adjusting the boost level is to just add numbers to the SP value and to exit the menu and run up the car. The other way of doing it is actually doing it live. So what you can do is hold the engine at a particular RPM while in the set point menu and start rotating the bezel to increase the SP value as the engine's on load and watch the boost level go up. Because you don't really care about what sort of duty cycle it's at, all you're worried about is the boost level that you achieve. So it's what we call live tuning mode. So we'll do that way now. All right, so we're gonna go into the boost menu again. Go to boost group two. We're now in set point two, and we'll enter that. So we, as we rotate the dial, we'll adjust that number, and we'll load up the car. Now 
now that we've got the SP value roughly where we want it to be, we're going to run up the car just to ensure that the boost curve looks like what we need it to be. So now you can see that boost curve is closer to our target. I'm pretty happy with that. So the next thing we're gonna set on the controller is boost correction. Now, looking at the orange trace, we can notice a little bit of drop off between 5200 RPM to 7000 RPM. And what we wanna do is sort of raise that line up so that it's a bit more flat over that RPM range. And we're gonna do that by using boost correction. So if we go into the boost menu, so settings, boost, go to boost group two, cause that's where we want to apply the boost correction factor. So we go in, what you'll have is RPM start, RPM end and factor. RPM start, is the RPM at which boost starts to drop off. In this case, it's 5200 RPM. So we're gonna turn this up to 5200 RPM. Save that. RPM end is where you want it to stop applying the correction factor. In this case, we're gonna set it to 7000 RPM. Save that. And the next is the factor. Now, what the factor is, is the percentage of duty cycle added at maximum RPM, and it's gonna interpolate that number between the start RPM and the end RPM. So at 5200 RPM, the duty cycle will still be the 36% that we set in the SP value, but at 7000 RPM, it's going to be 46%, um, including the factor. So what we're going to do is let's add a factor of 15% and see what the curve looks like. So I'm going to save that. And we're going to get back out of the menu into the live mode and we'll run up the car again. And as you can see, that factor has changed um, the boost curve between 5200 RPM and 7000. So we can see with the boost correction turned on with a factor of 15% between 5200 RPM to 7000, we see an increase in boost. Now, it is more than what we wanted However, for this demonstration, we can see what the factor does to the boost curve. Now that we've got our peak boost level set and the boost curve in the top end how we want it, the next thing is to see if we can actually get boost to come on earlier. Now there's two ways of doing that. One is with gate pressure. The other way is with sensitivity. Now first let's play with gate pressure. Now gate pressure is the pressure at which the eBoost free starts to try and control the boost curve and or start cycling the solenoid. How we do that is we go into the boost menu, go to boost group two, and we'll go to gate pressure. Now gate pressure is factory set at three PSI. Um, and what we want to turn it up to is approximately three PSI below target. It's a good starting point. So in this case, we've got about 17, 18 PSI. Let's set the gate pressure to 15 PSI and see what sort of curve that creates.
Now let's run up the car. So we can see there that we've actually got a boost spike, uh, which means we've probably got the gate pressure set a little bit too high. So if you're happy with that boost spike and that's what you wanted in your boost curve, you can leave it the way it is. Or in our case, we want to actually bring that down. So I'm going to take out free PSI out of that and see what the boost curve looks from that. So we've played with gate pressure and you can see if we've set it too high, you get a boost spike, which is undesirable. And we set it free PSI below and we, we, we see a marginal change in our boost response, but in all honesty, it's probably negli negligible. So essentially this is as responsive as this turbocharger system would be. Now, realistically, I'm pretty happy with the boost curves there, but um, there's another setting that we can always play with, which is sensitivity. Um, and what sensitivity is, is how reactive the boost controller is to changes in pressure. Now, that can sometimes aid in response or flatten out the curve over the rev range. This car doesn't really need it, but what I'll do is I'll put some um, sensitivity in, 25%, just to show you the effects of sensitivity on the boost curve. We're going to go into our settings, into boost, boost group two, and we can see here sensitivity is set to 30. Now let's see what this does. We can see with the solid line, got a bit of an oscillation there versus before with the sensitivity lower, it was a bit more flat. So in this case, we don't want too much sensitivity. So there you have it. Hopefully I've shown you how easy it is to set up the eBoost Free on any turbocharged vehicle. If there's anything else you wanted to know about boost control in general or the setup of the eBoost Free, please feel free to drop us a comment down below. I'm Richard, thanks for watching.